So here's a close-up of the one alpaca that I created with a different color fur. If you like this fur, this is the almond colored fur. And you can see how I left a little curl there for the front. That was on purpose. And then I love how I created rings around the neck. And then I also placed one around one on the front. So some people may have difficulty with the round one, but I'll show you all methods so you can decide what parts you want to add fur and which parts you don't. And you can see how I put the little round ringlet of fur around the feet, as well as for the body. I made a couple more rings around the body and then also I made the fuzzy tail. So I'll show you how I did everything for the fur just like I did with the almond color but I'm going to use a different color for the one on video tutorial. So for the top of the head I placed two pom-poms. So I'm going to show you one that I made with a pom-pom maker and then the other one that I made with just a regular piece of cardboard. So on video tutorial I'm going to be showing you my soft pink color which I really like. And so the first thing I'm going to do is show you the method if you're using a piece of cardboard. So I cut out a piece of cardboard with a width of 5 inches and then the height is 5 and a half inches. So now you just take the fur yarn and then just lay it down on the cardboard at the bottom of the cardboard and then you're just going to wrap the yarn around the center of the cardboard several times. Then you want to leave a length for tying around the center as well as for sewing it in place. So then you just cut it. Then you're going to take and carefully remove the loops of yarn from the cardboard and then take the center and wrap carefully, you don't want to mess up the loops, kind of loop it towards the center, that long piece that you left, and then wrap the yarn around the center. And you want to wrap it a couple of times to make sure that it's tight. And then you could take your tapestry needle and then just pull the fur yarn through the tapestry needle and then just take and tie a knot in the center I'm going to tie one more knot in the center and then I didn't even cut the loops on this pom-pom. I just left it the way it was. But if you wanted to, you could try to trim some of the loops. I would be careful because it's difficult to see. But then you have your loops of hair that you could place onto the alpaca. And then after you're finished sewing in place, you can leave a little curl with the long end that you left for sewing. My favorite way of making the pom-poms is with my large clover pom-pom maker, which is five inches in diameter. And all you do is just open it up. You have two half arches, two arches. Then just take your fur, and I usually leave a little bit of a loose yarn in on the side of the arch. And then I just take and wrap the yarn around the arches loosely. So you might want to, depending on how much you want to use, 
you could either do one loop or two. I just went ahead and did a couple loops and then when you finish just take and fold the arch back down and then you can take and trim the loose yarn end. So I didn't completely cover it because this is I want to it won't you don't have to to get a good look and that way you don't waste your fur yarn. Then just repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So you see I just make a couple couple uh, wrapping loops around the arch and then just close it up and then go ahead and trim it. And then you're going to take your embroidery scissors to cut down the center of the arches. So just take your embroidery scissors and just take and trim down the center. Make sure that cut. And then you repeat it on the other side too. And then you're going to take another piece of the yarn and you want to have enough to tie a knot and to sew. So then you take and wrap it right down the center and tie a knot. Then you can take and open up the arches. So you can see how easy this pom-pom maker is. I really like it. Have a little bit of fur, not too much of a mess. And then just remove the pom-pom from the pom-pom maker. And then I just kind of clean up some of the fur that might have come loose. And then you have your pom-pom ready to sew on. So you see how easy that was. And then you can trim it when you're done. You might want some of these curls for the unique look for your alpaca. And then here's the difference between the two. So not much difference. I'm going to put this one in the front because I do like the way it's fluffier more from the pom-pom maker and then I'll put this one towards the back. So I definitely love my pom-pom maker. I used this for my crochet amigurumi donkey as well and it works great and quick. So you have a quick mane that you can quickly work with pom-poms. So now you position your pom-pom where you want it on the alpaca head and you use your tapestry needle to sew it in place. So once you know where you want to position the pom-pom, you just go right into the head and sew the pom-pom in place. And then you just position it and continue. You can go up into the pom-pom as well. And then just make sure you position it and then you can go back into. You can use your other long end that you had for sewing as well. Just put that right onto your tapestry needle and then you can take and sew it in place. So if you want to make sure that your pom-pom is not wobbly, that you have it secure, and then you can see how I left two little curls on the front, and then towards the back is where I'm going to tie my knot after I'm finished sewing it in place. So I'm going to tie several knots to make sure it's nice and secure, and then you can just take and trim the loose yarn ends and you can leave, I trim it usually about an inch that way it leaves a little bit of fuzz for the back and then for my second pom-pom I sew it right up against the first pom-pom. Make sure you don't leave a gap between the pom-poms as you sew it in place and then this is what it looks like after sewing the other pom-pom in place. There's no gap on top So now I'm going to show you how to make the ringlets that go, the fur ringlets that go on the neck. So on the fur, 
you can see a strip of fabric and that's the that's what you're going to feel as you make your stitches and you're going to need your six millimeter crochet hook to crochet with this style of yarn and what you're going to do is you're going to take the yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop take your crochet hook go right through the loop hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb then you're going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then you're going to cinch the loop loosely around the crochet hook. So you don't want your stitches to be tight. You want them really loose. Nobody's going to be able to see the stitches and all you really want is the fur look. So then you're going to make a chain. So you're going to make a chain of so now you just need to make a chain of 43. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a chain and try not to make your stitches too tight. So if you need to pull up a little bit on the loop around the crochet hook, you can do that. So I have one chain, two, three. And you can see how it's very difficult you're not going to be able to see the stitches very well, but you'll be able to feel them. Four, five. So I'm going to show you a couple more and then I'll let you finish. You're going to make a chain of 43. So that's five, six, seven, and eight. So go ahead, finish a chain of 43 and then come back. So this is what my chain of 43 looks like when I'm finished and it measures approximately 15 and a half inches. And so for mine, I try to lay it so that the fabric is facing me. So that way I can kind of feel it. And like I said, you don't have to worry if you miss stitches or you don't get the 40, 41 stitch count. Um, the stitch count is not important. What's important is just evenly spacing double crochet stitches back across. So now for the first double crochet stitch, you're going to approximate approximately four stitches from the hook. So you can kind of feel there's one, two, three, and four. So this is about where the fourth stitch would be. So you just yarn over and then go into that fourth stitch and then bring up a loop and then you have three loops on your hook you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two you have two loops remaining yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the two remaining loops and you can see I have that the initial stitches that I skipped form the first double crochet and then I have my next double crochet but like I said you're not even going to see the stitches and all you want is the fur look anyway so don't stress about getting the stitch in the right space or what the stitch count is so now you're just going to yarn over and you're going to evenly space your double crochet stitches back across so you can kind of feel the stitches if you want to and like I said if you skip a stitch nobody's going to know and if you have trouble getting into the stitch itself, you don't have to go into the stitch. I'm going to show you how you can just go under the stitch. So you just yarn over. You go right where you think the stitch will go, right next to. Go underneath the chain. So you can see I'm not even going into a stitch. I'm going underneath the chain and I'm bringing up a loop. And then you're kind of wrapping the chain and then you just make your double crochet. So if you really have trouble getting into the stitches you could use that method too. And then just try to get the double crochet stitches to be the same size as the other ones. But for mine I'm just going to kind of yarn over, feel for the stitch, go into the stitch and if I have trouble then I just go under it and then complete a double crochet. 
And you can kind of pull up on the loops too if you want to increase the size of the double crochet. And you just evenly space them all the way across. I'm just going to work a couple more with you so you can kind of see how I do it. So it's really not as difficult as people think. I'm just evenly spacing my double crochet stitches and bringing up a loop to make a longer double crochet. And then I just evenly space my double crochet stitches and you can feel the stitches too about where you want to place them. And like I said, sometimes you can just go underneath it too if you want to. But you just evenly space them. I don't even worry about the stitch count for mine because I just go for the look and nobody's going to be able to tell anyway what your stitch count is or if you made a stitch wrong because you can't see them. So a lot of people are kind of scared of this style of yarn. I'm just going to go under because I'm not able to get into that stitch. I'm going to bring up a loop to make a larger double crochet because they have such a hard time with getting into the stitches or crocheting with it. So which is why I made I'm not making very long fur panels but you could, you could make longer because the hardest row is this initial row. The subsequent rows are really simple because you have all these spaces that you have between the double crochet for the second row and you'll see that when I make the second row. And I'm just going slower for the video tutorial too so people can see. So see I didn't get into the stitch and it's no big deal because all you have to do is go under the chain, bring up a loop to make a longer double crochet, and you can do it that way too. And then I just feel for the stitch and then go in. So that's how I make the first row, and like I said, the first row is the hardest one to complete. The second or third or fourth is a lot easier, and you can even count for the second and third if you wanted to try to maintain the size of the panel if you want larger panels. So for beginners I'm just making smaller ringlets so they get used to working with this yarn because for your alpaca this yarn is perfect and it's hard to find an equivalent soft yarn like this one. I really love this style of yarn for the alpaca. So I just wanted to make sure that beginners could also use this style of yarn to decorate their crochet alpaca. So go ahead, finish your first row, and then come back, and then I'll show you how to move up to the second row. So this is what my first row looks like. So you can see that there is no way you can see if I made any mistakes, or if I went into the stitch, or I didn't go into the stitch but you have this gorgeous fur panel that's very soft. So if you wanted to, you could stop here depending on how you want to design your alpaca. For mine, I made one more row and like I said, the second row is much easier as you're going to see as I show you as I crochet it. So to move up to the second row, you just chain three. One, two, three, and then turn your work so that chain three counts as the first double crochet for this next row. And then you're just going to evenly space your double crochet stitches back across. I don't even worry about stitch count. Now if you're making more than one, more than two rows, so this is our second row, if you're making more rows then you may want to pay attention to your stitch count because you don't want a crooked panel. But for mine this is only the second row so it really doesn't matter. So what you're going to do is you're just going to evenly space your double crochet stitches back across. So you just yarn over and then you go right where you think the next stitch is and then just bring up a loop and then make your double crochet. So I don't even know where I went. If I went in the gap between the double crochet or in the stitch itself, it doesn't matter. As you can see, no one can tell anyway. So then you just yarn over going where you think you want your next stitch 
and then make your double crochet. So I'm just evenly spacing. I, I'm not even paying attention where the stitch is because I really don't care. And as you can see, nobody can tell anyway, but you have this gorgeous soft fur panel that's getting larger. So you just evenly space your double crochet stitches back across. And most of mine are probably in the gaps between the double crochet stitches, but I'm not sure. I'm just quickly crocheting back across to the end. As you can see, the second row is much quicker. So I'll go a little bit slower for video tutorial. So I just go about where I think the next stitch is and bring up a loop and make my double crochet. Yarn over, go into where I think the next gap or stitch is and make my double crochet. And then you just create a really gorgeous fur panel. So then this is what my work looks like so far. It's so gorgeous and soft. And like I said, you can't even see my stitches if I made any mistakes or I didn't. It doesn't really matter. Then when you reach the end, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the fur piece in place around the neck. So I kind of cinch that down. So this is one. I made three ringlets for mine. So you can decide how many ringlets you want on your alpaca neck. So again for mine I made three the exact same way. So for the first ringlet I always start in the back and I have my tapestry needle on the long end that I left for sewing and then I kind of put it under the neck so you can see how I went right under the cheeks and the neck I mean cheeks and the around the neck and this is how it looks and then you want to meet the fur piece in the back so I'm going to join the fur piece in the back try and do this on video tutorial so make sure it's not twisted and then take your tapestry needle and grab the opposite side. Oops. Let me get that back on. I need to grab the opposite side. So again, I made sure it's not twisted and then I'm going to grab the opposite side and you want to sew the opposite sides together. So I'm going to go in and out sewing the opposite side together and then you just want to make sure it's positioned where you want and then I just sew right down the center of the fur because I don't want to waste my fur so I just go right down the center of the fur strip and sew it all the way in place and then I'm going to sew right back to where I started and I'm going to end right where I have my other loose yarn end. Then I'm going to take and tie a knot with the two loose yarn ends in the back of the head. And then you just trim the loose yarn ends. So not, not about, about a centimeter from the knot. And then you can see how it kind of blends in with the fur. Then the next one I sew in place is the one where the neck reaches the body. And this is the one where you can kind of pull the head back a little bit too if you need to with the fur. Kind of yank the head back or neck back to hold the head straight up and secure it to the body and you sew it on the same way that you did for the top for a ringlet. So then after you have finished sewing the one around the neck you may not want to put one in the center but for mine I wanted to put one in the middle as well. So this is what mine looks like with the three ringlets, the fur ringlets around the neck and the pom-poms on the head and now I'm going to show you how to make the feet. Now to make the feet 
You're going to start with your brown or light brown colored yarn and don't forget to switch back to your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Then you're going to take, we're going to start with the magic circle. So just drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle finger, just bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're just going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet. You have the two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. And then just take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then you're going to turn your work because we're going to work in rounds just like we've done before. And you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch in the round. Let me make sure I get under those two loops. There we go. So two single crochet in every stitch in the round. And when you're finished with this round, you should have a total of 12 stitches in the round. And then come back. So now you should have 12 stitches in the round and you can take and pull on the loose yarn end on the back if you need to close the center of the magic circle. Then just get your yarn marker and place it right where you left off. We're going to continue with our increase rounds which means we're going to be increasing the number of stitches in the round. And we're going to be making five increase rounds for the ones that already know how to do it. And we're going to be working in chronological order just like we did with the snout, the head, and the body. So for the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're just going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into the first stitch, two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then, if you remember, I'm not going to give you the stitch count for each round because all you have to do is add six stitches to the previous round, and that means that you should have ended up with 18 total stitches after finishing that round. So then, for the next increase round, just take and move the yarn marker up to where you left off, and then you're just going to make one single crochet into the next two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around. Then make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And then the last increase round is one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have finished with 42 stitches in the round. So then go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off and then just make one single crochet in every stitch around for only one round. So one round of one single crochet in every stitch. Then go ahead and move your yarn marker up and now I'm going to show you how to make 12 
decrease stitches or 12 single crochet two stitches together. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over. Let me make sure I've got the right stitch. Yeah. Okay. So the next stitch over, bring up a loop. You have two loops on the hook. Go ahead and go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. Now you should have three loops on the hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three loops for a decreased stitch or single crochet two stitches together. So that's the first one. Now we just need 11 more. Go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for your second single crochet two stitches together. And you're going to finish a total of 12 of them. I'm going to make one more with you. Go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch and bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a single crochet two stitches together. So that's my third one. Go ahead and make a total of 12 single crochet two stitches together and then come back. Now after you finish 12 single crochet two stitches together, this is what your work will look like. Then you can go ahead and make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches. So only one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches for the round. So now you should have a total of 30 stitches in the round. And this is what my work looks like so far. Then just take and move the yarn marker up and now you're going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So then when you reach the yarn marker go ahead and move the yarn marker up and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch until you're in the back of the alpaca foot. So we're going to change colors in the back of the foot. So just make one single crochet in every stitch until you're in the back of the alpaca foot. So now once you're in the back of the foot, go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just go right into that next stitch, yarn over, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to bring in your Magnolia Way colored yarn or your beige colored yarn. Just bring up a loop. Then you're going to take and tie a knot with the previous colored yarn. And then you're going to cut the previous colored yarn. And then you're ready to crochet with your new color. So go ahead and remove the yarn marker. You don't need it at this point. And you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds with your new color. So one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds and then come back. So now after I finish the three rounds, one, two, three, you can go ahead and leave a little bit of a loop in the back because we're going to come back to this when we're finished making the alpaca nails. So now I'm going to show you how to make the alpaca nails. So now you can decide if you want your alpaca nails to be the same color as the whole foot or if you want to make colored toenails. So you can use whatever color yarn that you want for the toenails. I'm going to use the same glittery pink that I did for the cheeks and the nose and the tongue and the ears. So for now you can go ahead and set the foot aside while we make the nails and go ahead and get whatever color yarn you want for your toenails. And we're going to make, for one toenail, you're going to need three of these small 
triangles. So I'm going to show you how to make one of the small triangles. Just take your yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop, take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. And you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Then you're going to make a chain of seven. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have a chain of seven. Now you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So you count back one and two, go into that second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And after you finish this first row, remember that chain seven was our starting chain, and now we're making one single crochet in every stitch back across for our first row. We should have a stitch count of six when you're finished. So now you should have a stitch count of six. Then, when you reach the end, go ahead and just turn your... Actually, we're going to make one more row with the six stitch count. So you're going to chain one and then turn your work. So that chain one counts as your first stitch for this second row. You're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, complete a single crochet, and then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across, and you should still have a stitch count of six. So now I still have a stitch count of six. Now this time you're not going to chain one. You're just going to turn your work and then you're going to go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. And then make one single crochet into each of the stitches back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of five. and we're starting to form our triangle. So now each row is going to decrease by one stitch. So now I have a stitch count of five. I'm going to turn my work again, make a single crochet into the next stitch. So that's one. Single crochet into the next stitch for two. Single crochet into the next stitch for three and then single crochet into the last and fourth stitch. So now I have a stitch count of four turn your work, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and then a single crochet into the last and third stitch. Then turn your work, single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, now you have a stitch count of two, turn your work, and then just slip stitch into the next stitch. So go into the next stitch, Yarn over, bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and the point of the triangle. Then you're going to go ahead and finish off, yarn over, and pull enough yarn through to sew the triangles together. So you want to leave a little bit of an extra longer loose yarn end for sewing the triangle pieces together. So now go ahead and make two more small triangles just like this one. So now you should have three little triangles and you're going to take two of them, go ahead and take two for now, and lay them on each other. And then I usually lay them so that the two loose yarn ends are facing towards the top and I'm going to tie a knot. You have to hold it because it will just twist if you don't. Then I'm going to take one of the long loose yarn ends at the tip of the triangle 
and then put it right onto my tapestry needle. And then you're going to sew along one edge of the two triangles. So just go into the tip of the other triangle. And then you're just going to go in and out, sewing along the edge of the triangle, sewing the two pieces together. So I just go in and out and then just quickly sew the two triangle edges together. And then once you reach the end, go ahead and tie a knot. And then the two smaller loose yarn ends are going to be tucked inside later, but the longer loose yarn end is going to be used to sew the toenail to the foot. Then you have two of the triangles sewn together and you can see that on this side you have a ridge and then you don't have a ridge on the inside. Well actually the ridge side is going to be the right side for your camel toe. So you want this on the right side. So now you're going to grab your next triangle and you're going to line it up so that the point is together with all three of the points together. Then take one of the long loose yarn ends at the point and put it onto your tapestry needle. And then you want to make sure that the ridges are on the right side because like I said the ridges are going to be on the right side of the camel toe. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle and go into the point of the opposite triangle and you're just going to sew along the edge of the triangle. So I'm sewing all the way down the edge of the two triangles sewing them together and then I'm going to tie a knot whoops make sure I'm in the, the video screen tie a knot at the bottom I usually go through twice and then you leave the long end loose yarn end for sewing later just leave that alone then this is what your your um, triangles look like so you have the ridges on the right side you can see the sew ridges then you're going to take your last long loose yarn in at the point of the triangle, put it onto your tapestry needle, and then you're just going to place the last two edges of the triangles together. And you can see how you form like a pyramid, and all the ridges are on the right side. Then you're just going to take and sew this last edge together, just go right through the point. Make sure you don't have a hole in the point of your camel toe nail. Make sure it's closed. And then just finish sewing the last two sides of the triangle together. And then you can just take and tie a knot. on the last corner. And you need two of these. So you have one camel toe complete. Now you need one more camel toe. Go ahead and make one more and then come back. So now you should have two of the toenails completed. And this is what mine looks like. And now they're ready to be sewn onto the foot. So now you're going to get your foot. And be careful you don't tie up the, the loop of yarn in the back because we're going to resume crocheting after we're done sewing on the toenails. So the first thing that you do is in the front, and if you have trouble finding the center, 
of the foot, then you just want to kind of fold it like this. And you can even put a little stitch marker in the center of the front of the foot. I have my little stitch marker case that I got from Pastiche Accessories on Etsy. She can make you a custom one if you wanted her to make you one. And you can see I have all my little stitch markers that she designed. She has a lot of collectible ones and she even does custom work. I'm not an affiliate for her but I just love her work as you can see and I have my own collection. Then all you have to do is take your stitch marker and you could just use a piece of yarn too if you wanted to, a little yarn marker to help. But just take and find the center so you know where the center is for put before you place your toes. Then you're going to take the top part of the toe first. So the top part of the toe is where you have the middle line and then you see how you have the triangle on the bottom. So here's the bottom triangle and then here's the center of the top of the toe. Then just take your tapestry needle and put it onto one of the long ends that you left for sewing at the end and make sure that you tuck in your loose yarn ends and you can add a little bit of craft stuffing. You only need just a little bit if you use it. So after I tucked in the small loose yarn ends, I just took a little bit of craft stuffing and placed that in there. And then you want to take and place the toe. So you're going to have, here's the center, so you're going to have one toenail on this side of the center and then one on the other side. So if you want them even, that's how the stitch marker helps you. Then you just take and go right at the bottom of the beige colored yarn with your tapestry needle. And then you just go in and out sewing the edge of the toenail. So I just go right along the edge of the toenail. And then you're going to sew all around the border of the toenail. Then when I reach the first corner, I take the new loose yarn in that I left for sewing and then I use that for sewing. So I'm going to go in and tie a knot with the other loose yarn end, the pink one. Out of screen. So here's my other loose yarn end that I was sewing with the pink one. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim the previous yarn that I was using. That just helps to keep everything kind of neat on the inside so it doesn't get as tangled, but you don't have to. Then you want to reshape your toe, the toenail. Make sure you have the pointed triangle. And it will curve a little bit on the bottom. You can keep that curve in there as you sew. And then you just go up with your new loose yarn end for sewing and then just sew all along the bottom edge of the toenail. So now I sewed the bottom edge and then I reached my next loose yarn end for sewing. And then I'm just going to go in and tie a knot to the loose yarn end just like I did for the previous corner. And then I'm just going to trim the previous yarn that I was sewing with. And now I have a new longer loose yarn end to sew with. And then I'm going to sew the last edge of the toenail. So you just go in and out sewing the last edge of the toenail and then tie a knot in the inside just like you did with the rest.
And then you just take and sew the other toenail on the exact same way. And then you want the two toenails to kind of touch. So this is what it looks like when I'm finished sewing the toenails in place. Then you can go ahead and remove your stitch marker. And then we're going to finish crocheting in the back of where we left off in the back of the foot. So go ahead and place your yarn marker right where you left off. And we're going to be making an increase round. So for this increase round, you're going to be making one single crochet into six stitches. So one single crochet into six stitches and then you're going to make two single crochet into the next stitch. And then And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into six stitches. And then two single crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead, keep repeating that pattern until you get back to where we started. Then when you get to the back of the foot, you'll have two remaining stitches. Go ahead and make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches. So now you should have a total of 34 stitches in the round. Go ahead and move the yarn marker up and now you're going to maintain the stitch count. So you're only going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for six rounds. So six rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Then after you finish making one single crochet in every stitch for six rounds, this is what it looks like. We're going to make another increase round this will be our last increase round. Go ahead and take and move your yarn marker up and then you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches. And then make two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the beginning then just make one single crochet into each of the two remaining stitches now you should have 38 stitches in the round Go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for 22 rounds. Now before you start making too many rounds you may want to add a little bit of craft stuffing into the foot. 